Hi. So this is decorolate, or decorolate. Pronounce it however you want. Um, what it is, is a delay based on a shift register. And if you've watched any of my videos about shift registers, then you know that I use the analogy of a bucket brigade delay a lot to talk about how shift registers pass information from one stage to the next stage to the next. So the way that this works is that you have a delay line that you can tap in, you can use MIDI clock, uh, however you want to do it. Uh, but you tap in a tap time, and then you can divide that tap time into a number of divisions with this division control, going up to 16 or down to 1. One's not the most interesting, but you can do some neat stuff with it, too. And what happens is that in each of these divisions, uh, the patch will make a sort of a probabilistic coin flip um, to determine whether or not the information, the sound, uh, at that part of the delay line is fed back into itself and therefore reproduced or replaced with new information. Um, so you have the ability to control how often that happens. If we put the replace rate at 100, then... everything gets recorded in. Um, but when you turn it down, the recording will only happen sometimes. Right, it only captured part of what I played there. And if I keep playing, captures different parts of what I play based on whether or not the coin flip goes one way or the other. Coin flip's a bad analogy because that's a 50-50 chance. You have a control here over the probability. And we see here on the screen it lights up when uh, the buffer is being, the delay line buffer is being recorded into. We have this option to sync or not sync the two sides of this stereo delay. Um, so when they're unsynced, both sides get their own probability chance. And it's, I mean, it's the same chance, but they flip differently. So, so you'll get different outcomes and we see different colors for which side. And when they're in agreement, we get white. Um, <laughs> start getting, uh, if you don't sync the sides, you start getting really sort of like complex interplays on either side because they're recording from the same source, but they're not recording at the same time. So you get a phrase sort of begin on one side and conclude on the other, um, you know, or there will be a gap between when a note shows up here and when it shows up over here. Um, we can also determine the replace depth. And this is kind of like decay. It determines how much the, the feedback loop is suppressed uh, when new information is recorded. So if we set the depth to 100, whenever new information is recorded, it, it'll erase.
and we'll hear this die out as it's replaced with nothing. And I think this is one of the really interesting parts of this patch. It's not just how it records, it's also how sounds fade away and get blended together with new sounds. So if we set the replace at a lower depth, uh, then it's it won't just replace what's in the buffer at that point. It'll sort of uh, suppress it, make it quieter, and there will be new information recorded over top of that, but they'll both be there at the same time. And so you can get some really complex soundscapes with pretty minimal input. Um, I'm going to sync the sides again because it can get a little, you know, for my demonstration purposes, a little hectic. And we have this slope thing. You may have heard the, the notes fade in and out. When the slope is at... Uh, zero, give me a second, um, then you'll just have an on off. It'll be very glitchy. Um, and this is kind of cool for some glitchy stuff. I'm going to turn up the number of divisions. a little easier to hear what's going on. But the slope is a um, bipolar control. When you turn it to the uh, right, positive numbers, you get um, fade ins and outs. And the amount of time that is spent at the top is limited. So it starts out as a square wave, on off and it starts to become more trapezoid and at the end at the far right at one it's actually a, a triangle wave is the sort of envelope that that surrounds these recording uh, periods if you turn it to the left into the negative numbers then instead of being linear curves, they become logarithmic curves as the envelope pass that controls this passes through a CV filter. And it's a similar feel, but it's slightly different. got more of a funk to it. So that's the, the basic controls for the, the patch. You can set the number of divisions, you can set the replace rate, you can set the, the slope and the depth of the replace, and you can sync the sides. Everything else that I'm going to talk about is just sort of like uh, candy, right? So... We have uh, a mod control. It's a sine wave at first, uh, but there's also this noise mod option. And as you turn that, the sine wave is progressively mixed with digital noise from a random module. So you get a more uh, fuzzy lo-fi sound. depth a little bit. So this is still sine wave mixed with noise. As we turn it more, we get more noise and less sine wave. So 
that's not to everyone's taste, but I like noise. If you've watched any of my patches, you know that I like noise. So there's noise. It's an option. You can use it or not use it. Your choice. I'm going to turn the mod depth down a little bit. Um, there's... So for me, this is a real, like, pad machine. And I wanted to have pretty extensive tone controls over that. Um, so we have a low pass filter and a high pass filter, uh, again, in stereo. So everything is stereo in the, in the patch um, so that you can really set the, the range of the signal. So you can get it pretty dark uh, and cut out some of the lows and again, get more of a lo-fi sound, but also something that like sits really nicely under more full range uh, music. I'm gonna switch this back to linear because that's generally how I roll, but I wanted the logarithmic option for the slope. a reverb, a plate reverb, uh, with the decay and the, the mix controls here. Um, I'm not going to go into that, you know what a reverb does. Uh, wet and dry levels. Um, the gain staging on this can be a little bit peculiar just because it can take in more information than it reduces over time. So particularly if you have a really steady sound source, um, you know, you may want to increase, for instance, the replace depth so that new information doesn't just pile up on top. It's not been a real problem for me when I run this patch. Um, I used it in a live stream where there was sort of continuous sound the whole time and it didn't pose any problems, but I want to point that out just in case. Um, and, and now we're in the stomp switches. So the first stomp switch, The first stomp switch is tap tempo. I'm not gonna mess around with that. Um, my camera is not picking up color very good right now, uh, but the middle stomp switch, what it does is locks the loop in place. It basically automatically turns this replace rate uh, control down to zero. And it'll just hold on to whatever weird, you know, uh, loop has developed in the buffer. Um, just turning down the, the wet signal. It changes color when that happens. Uh, and, and also I'll point out that all of the UI buttons pulse in time with the master clock. The, the, whatever you've tapped in, whatever you have coming in from MIDI clock. Uh, and there is a page uh, for the clock here where you can set a uh, different tap uh, tap division. So there's a clock divider here provided. Um, and the delay lines go up to 16 seconds. So you may want to use that. You can get some really long sort of evolving uh, things using pretty long delay lines. And it supports that because 16 seconds is really <laughs> longer than you think. Uh, in a lot of cases. Um, so the other thing, and I'm just going to get another loop going. The right stomp switch can do one of three things. It has a little radio button configuration here. We can add, and when you add, it bypasses the uh, replace knob entirely. All of these sort of do all explain replace and erase in a second. But I can essentially overdub over this loop.
and you could have uh, add-on all the time, even in an unfrozen loop, and, and you know, like, put in information to be degraded in the weird ways that the replace parameter does that with its slopes and whatever. So if you wanted to make sure something was recorded and then slowly sort of got decayed and replaced or whatever, you could start off by adding it in using this radio button. Replace is like the replace knob, but it just function, or the replace, you know, probability, but it just same replace depth. It also, um, you know, doesn't override this mechanism, but since it's replicating the same behavior, it doesn't really matter. The place where that does matter is with the erase uh, function. So let's say you've got a loop. Let me record something again. and you want to erase parts of it. This again uses the replace depth to set the depth that it erases stuff. But unlike replace, where the feedback loop is suppressed and new information is added, no new information is added here. Uh, but again, if this isn't locked and the replace probability you know, comes up, it will add information. So it's a little bit uh, dicey. I, didn't want to go through like disabling that mechanism it got complicated but we can sort of use this as a racer and you can do some interesting rhythmic stuff with it too uh, to erase like different parts of the loop I'm gonna release that again and that is the patch. That's all the controls. Um, I really like this patch. I know it's a little bit like weird conceptually maybe, but functionally think of it just sort of as a um, sort of a happy accident way of, of creating these layers of sound. You know, particularly I think when the slope is set to a pretty triangular shape, you get these things that fade in and out and aren't super distinct sit really nicely underneath other plane. You can sort of like capture a loop of those and just have them be a backdrop to whatever you're doing. So, you know, um, sorry, this had to be a talking video, but I, I think you know, just because if I say shift register delay, it doesn't make a lot of sense. And I think being able to demonstrate it here and talk about it a little bit more does. Um, you know, so this is decorrelate, decorrelate, decor, whatever. We've been over this, pronounce it however. Um, and I just wanted a name that sort of made me think of like taking things that, that seem causally related and pulling them apart uh, because it kind of does that with the audio input, right? Like it, it, it doesn't uh, sort of immediately reproduce whatever is played into it. it. You know, because it uses this probabilistic engine, uh, you get very different results. So that is Decorrelate. Um, thanks for checking it out. I hope you have a good day. And uh, yeah, take care.